Just a little disclaimer before we start the video, this Husqvarna is not mine, it actually belongs to James from JWN Lawn Care, so check him out on YouTube or I wouldn't be able to make this video. Um, and the other reason you can see I don't have this set up with my handle and my speed feed head and no guard etc is because this is currently listed for sale as I'm looking at upgrading this to one of those because for me the benefits definitely outweigh the costs. Hey guys, today so I'll be doing a comparison of the Still FS94 this is the Husqvarna 525 LST. So these are both the top of the top for Still and Husqvarna's commercial 25cc class brush cutters or whipper snippers. So yeah, we'll start at the bottom and work my way up. So here we've got the gearbox. Now I believe the Still gearbox is on a different angle to the Husqvarna gearbox. Um, I don't know if you guys can notice. So I'm not sure the exact amount, but I do know there is some difference in angle. Uh, the FS94 is running one of the still heads. I'm not sure on the name, but it's similar to the still speed feed design. It's a bit older though. I know now they've got one with a white cap that goes on the bottom. Um, this one's running a speed feed 400. So that's definitely my preference when it comes to trimmer heads. I'm not a huge fan of this. It's got the C, P or F3 cord in it, whereas this is running Diamond Edge 2.7 mil. Um, Husqvarna's not running a guard as you can see and the Still does have a guard on. Now with the guard, you get about that much line, whereas without the guard, I like to run about that much. Yes, it will wear on the clutch, but look, these machines are built pretty well, so they'll last a long time before you have any sort of issues or anything of that sort. Um, one screw which loosens the gearbox, which is nice. Uh, the Husqvarna also has one, which is just there if it'll focus. Um, working our way up the shaft, the shafts are a different width. I believe the Husky one's a bit thinner, but doesn't make a massive difference another thing that does make a big difference between the husky versus the still is the husky does have a different gearbox with different gear reductions which therefore gives it a lot more grunt than the still even though the engines are very very similar um working out to the handles this is the standard still loop handle with the barrier bar i don't run them like this so i'm just putting it back together for a reason which i'll explain at the end of the video um so it's obviously got the plastic loop handle there's no rubber coating the four mix stills do come with a rubber coating on the handle, which does make them a lot nicer to hold. Um, that's what I used to use before I switched to the Kawasaki handles, which I really, really much prefer. Much more spongy, much more comfortable, and I find a bit easier on the back. Um, it's got this here as a carry handle, which I find completely useless, unless you do what I've done here and bunch it between this and the throttle, so it doesn't move, but sometimes it will spin. You'll get like the parts of your skin stuck in there, and it twists, and it really hurts, so... To me, those are useless. I wouldn't say those are that great. I much prefer the Husky design, how they've left it with nothing. So you just got the shaft and the handle. Much simpler, less things to snag on, makes it obviously not much, but a little bit lighter. So I definitely prefer that. The Husqvarna handle is quite similar to this with the rubber coating, but it's sort of angled like that. I don't have it with me, so I can't do a fair comparison, but you get the idea anyway. Um, moving up to the throttle and the stop switch. So Husqvarna has an auto return. All you do is you just flick it forward and it springs back, like so, that'll focus. And the still one, you just press down and that'll turn it on and off. Now, the one thing about the still that I guess is advantageous over the Husky when it comes to this is it's got this thing here which locks the throttle, which if I can move it, I for some reason can't move it. But what happens is you turn this one and it limits the throttle so it'll only rev so far. Now, if you get into a large bunch of bunch of weeds or grass or anything, you can just pull, it'll go click and we'll un like, unlock it so it will go full throttle. And we've got a nice little spider here joining us today, but oh well. <laughs> so the still throttle is quite stubby and quite small, which I don't mind. Um, I'm used to this because I've also got a 131. This is all I've ever known with throttles. So this to me is taking a bit of getting used to and I can't say I'm the biggest fan. Um, very sort of plasticky and kind of flimsy it feels. I have no 
worries with it breaking and such. It just doesn't feel as nice in my opinion. I also miss the rubber, like this is rubber coated and it just feels a lot nicer in the hand, whereas this does feel a bit plasticky, even though there's some sort of rubber underneath. But to me, that's not doesn't make a massive difference. So it swivels a bit, whereas the stool is fixed. Unless obviously it gets loose, but that's not how it's intended to be used. So here is what mounts the engine to the shaft and the hush bar, I believe, is all one piece. This one's got an hour meter on it as it's not actually my machine. It borrowed off James Dean Curvis of Jade Edwin Lawn Care, so thanks to him for letting me borrow this. Moving up here, you've got a heat guard, which is nice, so you don't burn your elbow, because I have done that, resting my arm on here, burnt it, and then, yeah. So, got a steel brace side sticker, which is my preferred dealer, and the spider's moving. Um, didn't actually come from steel shop brace side, but I just like chucking them on there. So your spark plug's here, it's easy to access, just unscrew this, pull it off, and you've got access to your spark plug. Husqvarna is actually rubber, but this design is better as it's got sides which are molded into the, the top casing. So if you drop this, this does have a tendency to see how it comes out, whereas the Husqvarna one is not going anywhere. So I definitely much prefer that on the Husqvarna. To know with the muffler here, with your pull start. This one has an easy start spring in it, which I'm not a fan of at all. So if you look at it, when it's pulled, goes like that, whereas when you pull the Husqvarna over, it's over like that, so much prefer the design of the Husqvarna one, much smoother to start, feels like it's got a lot less compression, plus there's also no complicated springs in there to break when you need the most, so do like that. Now moving up here, we've got the choke, so the Husqvarna choke is, you pull it up, if I can do that, which it's not locking either, whereas it's still, if you put it out, put it there, locks in, and then to un... Like you get it running obviously, hit the throttle and the choke comes off. Now if you guys can have some patience with me because I filmed the whole rest of the video the wrong way around on my phone so if you can have some patience with that I apologise but this is all I got. So when you pull up the Husqvarna choke you can hit the throttle as much as you like and it makes no difference. Whereas with the steel, you got that there, push it in, I can do it and there we go. Hit the throttle and it flicks off. So I do prefer the steel for that, but then again, when it does flood, you can't pull the steel on choke, whereas this one, you can actually try and turn it over on choke and rev it, so you can give it some throttle. So that does, does is a nice improvement. Now, moving down here, we've got the petrol tank. So this is the Husqvarna one. I do like that it's got some reinforcement here. It does help nicely. Steel one's here. I believe the steel's got a bigger tank. Also, it's got a tool. Look, you need a tool for the air filter cover. It's Husqvarna, this toolless, which is always great. Um, we scroll this over here, we've got the metal bash guard underneath and as you can see the steel is lacking in that department but it does have quite a thick um, bottom piece so that shouldn't wear through. You get quite a few years out of it before you'd have any issues but just on principle I do think the Husqvarna is built a bit stronger. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Now as far as price, the Husqvarna retails at I think it's $749 and the steel retails for $600. But the Husqvarna with an ABN, you get 20% off, which works it down to also 600. So these two for price are on par. If I was to choose one, I'd definitely, or well, most likely choose the Husqvarna. Obviously, it depends on the quality of your dealer and your preference. Some people like to run all one brand, as in all steel or all Husqvarna. Um, but the performance in this, in my opinion, is a lot better than this. It's not hugely better, but considering it's a bit lighter and it's more noticeable, it is better. My only downside to the Husqvarna is obviously this can be a downside, but then again, it's a trade-off. So you either lock the throttle on choke or you can't, but then again, you have to worry about it. Um, but the other only downside is obviously the balance isn't great, <laughs> as you can see. Yes, the still has the guard on, but even when it had the guard off, etc., on the same head, it was still a lot better balanced. As you can see now, that's not falling back or anything, which is a lot better. But aside from that, that sort of concludes my little review here on the Husqvarna and the Steel. So those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments, and I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.